movements down? Of course there is, right? How further down we go, we just don't know. And now we'll begin to looking at price action from an eight hour perspective. We saw some late rejection here as the market began to close. Uh, understanding again that with the geopolitical pressures across the world. Uh hey everyone, welcome back to the Professor Trades channel. We are going to be breaking down crude oil starting at this monthly level. And then we're going to look at every time frame walking it down to get you ready for this amazing trading week that is coming up. If you've been following me, I was on travel for almost two weeks through Europe. And then when I got home, I got very sick. I'm now starting to feel a lot, a lot better, as you can tell by my voice. So I'm glad to be here to give you massive, massive value as we break uh, into crude oil. Now, I do want you to know that in addition to crude oil, if you stay until the end of the video, I'm going to be also covering the SP500, which is ES on futures, and the NASDAQ 100, which is the NQ on futures as well. So again, many of you have requested uh, additional pairs on the Sunday market analysis. So those will be afterwards. If you're watching the recording, I will have those time stamped below as well. And if you want me to include either a currency, another indice, or another commodity on next week's video, go down below, comment below which ones you want me to add in addition to crude oil. I'll do three per video and I will add those for you as well. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into our crude oil analysis here. So we are looking at the monthly chart. Now, listen, there is no secret, okay? No secret whatsoever uh, that we've been riding one, two, three, four straight months of crude oil rising, okay? Uh, we are kind of getting to this pivotal point here. There is going to be a lot of uh, geopolitical pressure. You know, I believe we're probably going to see a little bit higher prices first uh, before we come down. But again, uh, we are not going to trade what we think. Uh, it is so important that we stay focused and we trade what we see in the charts on the technical analysis. And even though we pay attention to some of the news, we don't get caught up in thinking where price is going and letting that make our decision. Let's trade the zones that we are going to be giving you here uh, on this analysis here. Okay, so as we look at the monthly chart, we are going to take a look at this Fibonacci retracement and we're going to kind of see that we've broken uh, structure here at the 61.8. Okay, so again, by technical analysis purposes, we should continue to see uh, price increasing or going a little bit higher. And I think probably we'll be targeting somewhere near that 88.6, which is right around that 90 to $91 a barrel price tag on this chart. OK, so just wanted to give you some perspective there on the monthly uh, that we are obviously still trending up and we are going to begin to do our analysis from this pivotal point. As we break down now into the weekly, again, we can clearly see here. Let me move my chart over here for easy access uh, that we broke this structure right here. OK, so here as we look at the weekly again, more evidence that we should um, be going somewhat higher. Okay. And I'm going to mark this wick right here. I like to look at the wicks, uh, because a lot of times price will come back to these areas. So this wick here is not only a wick at 94, 87, we'll call it 95, but also it's the top of this zone here, uh, which is the next major resistance point on this weekly chart. Okay. So as we look at this again, We've got to understand that there is no evidence that price uh, is going to drop anytime soon, meaning back down into like the 70s. So for now, we really have to consider looking at buying these dips on crude oil as crude oil makes its move a little bit higher. OK, so I'm going to leave that structure point there again, and we're going to be working off of this structure on the weekly. And then I'm also going to grab a structure point right in here at this weekly level as well. OK, so we're going to be working off these three levels and we will be analyzing this on a much 
much smaller time frame as we continue moving down uh, the different time frames. So stick with me and we're going to get you some gap entries as we get closer uh, to completing our crude oil analysis video. Okay, so let's now jump into our daily. Let's begin to see what our <clears throat> daily price action has been showing us. And again, here is that level. And now as we kind of get into the daily, I kind of like to start marking this up a little bit more visually here so we can begin to see this on a bigger perspective. And we also begin to look at this uh, daily as we walk it down from the different types of uh, price action. Okay, so here we are on the daily. I'm going to now begin to mark up a level here on the daily that had shown previous uh, rejection. If you see it right in here, okay, we had this rejection area here. It didn't last too long, but it did reject several times. And we are nearing that $88 area again on the daily. So again, for right now, all intents and purposes is on crude oil, we got to just continue looking to buy those dips that we talked about. Okay. And then secondly is I'm going to mark up this these two wicks right here, which are equal highs at about that $90 price point. Okay. So, <coughs> excuse me, as we begin to look at this now, we kind of have our playing area, right? Uh, just like, you know, in sports, there's a playing field. This becomes our playing field on crude oil. Okay. We've already evaluated on the higher time frame that price is continuing uh, to go higher. And this uh, 88 is going to be interesting to see what happens here at this key level. So as we break down uh, now at the eight hour chart, we start looking at price action a little bit differently. Okay. So <clears throat> are there going to be movements down? Of course there is, right? How further down we go, we just don't know. And now we'll begin to looking at price action from an eight hour perspective. We saw some late rejection here as the market began to close uh, understanding again that with the geopolitical pressures across the world also in the united states uh an election year wanting to keep gas prices down this is going to be something very difficult in the months ahead to kind of look at and that's why we have to stay focused on these technical analysis and not worry so much about the fundamentals as much okay they're important but understand that technicals and price action will always be king. And that's what we focus on over and over in our trading group. And I think that's why we're so successful, a community over 170 traders trading together. So if you haven't yet checked out the community, I invite you to go down to that website, scroll in below the professor See if it's a fit for you, whether you're on the Forex side or on the future side, we have over 170 traders on both sides trading, not only crude oil, but indices, and all the currencies as well. So as we kind of jump back in here now, let's go over to the four hour and let's start looking at some areas of value, some zones, some areas, and I apologize for my dog there, as we uh, look at this time frame, We're gonna mark that area up there and we are going to mark up this area right in here, okay? So now that we have looked at this, we set up our, our parameters right in here. So as we look at these four hour levels here, uh, we are just going to look at what price action does. And so these are going to be key levels that we focus on for the beginning of the week here. So what I want you to do is if you don't have these levels marked up, you can pause this video or you can come back and watch it and mark up these key levels on a four hour time frame because we are going to expect to see bounces or rejections from these levels as we move forward throughout the course of the week. Now, as we look at this one hour time frame here, again, now we begin to see what price action is doing at these levels. And so this key level right here is going to be important uh, because we've reached uh, this resist, or I'm sorry, this support level multiple times, right? We had over six hours of rejection right in here and we kind of close the market at this level right here so as we begin to look at this from an hourly perspective 
uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to tag this area as this is going to be uh, our gap. Okay. And I want to kind of real quick uh, explain uh, what that gap is because I get a lot of questions also with our newer traders in our group of, hey, what is the gap? So remember, the gap is nothing more than this. Uh, when price closed, okay, on Friday, uh, price closed at this price point right here, which is showing about 8667 now, what's going to happen with the Sunday market open uh, usually is there's going to be a substantial gap on crude oil. So let's say, for example, that price opens to the top side. OK, and I'll keep this. Uh, that's my best version of a candle. OK, so I'll keep it green for a positive candle. What happens here is price opens, let's say, at 8764. So the difference between 8764 and where price closed is the gap, right? There's going to be a, a open space. That's the gap. Now, usually what happens is price runs away for a while, just as it did last Sunday. Okay. And then eventually comes back to close the gap. So we are on a live analysis inside of our trading community. It's a private app that I have for our members. We trade live in that app three to four days a week. So that's one of the benefits of being in the club is we look at these open gaps right at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then we develop a game plan for whether we're going to take them or not, because we have certain parameters that need to be met if we are going to take gap trades. But that's usually what happens. And then vice versa. Let's say the gap opens below and I'll make this candle red. What's going to happen here is kind of same thing. Price will run away from when the market opens. It'll hit an area in this case of support, and then price will come back up to close the gap. OK, so again, if it meets our parameters, we are trading the gaps as a, in our community. And again, I always stress to people do not over lot size on gap trading because gaps uh, can close within a few minutes, a few hours, or it could take a few days to close. Uh, usually, historically, crude oil gaps close within 24 hours. So again, it might have been a little bit of drawdown. So smaller lot size, it's like the extra whipped cream on your favorite dessert, right? Uh, it's like extra bonus money that'll happen either Sunday into Monday, but you can't throw everything at it because you could be in drawdown for again, in worst case scenarios up to a week or so, even though that's in less than 2% of the cases. So you want to make sure that you are trading it smart when it comes uh, to uh, crude oil. Okay, so this will be our gap scenario for today. Uh, we are going to mark up these lower levels with just uh, a different color so we can have those. And again, if you are in the uh, trading club, you will get access to these live charts that I post in there, as you know. So I'll make those available a little bit later on <clears throat> today. So we are going to be working off of these levels right here. OK, for the beginning of the week and then as price moves, uh, we obviously uh, keep these support and resistance areas. But again, the beauty of the trading community is that it updates you as we move up and down, uh, as we move throughout the course of the week. Right. Uh, we will send out our trade alerts <clears throat> and we will also trade out. I'm sorry, uh, send out our updates as price is moving inside of our club. OK, so again, these are some intermediate zones that we are going to find based on some previous support and resistance. So we'll update you those. And again, challenge you to come on in, join our 20 pip challenge. We're giving you at least 20 pips a day in our trade alerts with crude oil and the other stuff. And you'll find some massive, massive value. So uh, that is where we are going to begin our week for crude oil. And again, just challenge you to come on in, uh, get some massive, massive value when it comes to uh, crude oil and be a part of our trading community. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we are going to pivot as promised. We are going to be uh, jumping into our next chart, which is the SP 500. So let's go ahead and dive into that chart right now. Okay. So we are looking at the SP 500. This is a weekly perspective. You can kind of see here. Uh, again, just looking at this chart, we know, no secret, right? All the indices have been so, so overbought, uh, a very bullish market that we have been in. Uh, but we see some rejection there at 52.76. So as I walk this up here, okay, we did have 
Uh, and again, I want to go kind of go back to that weekly. Uh, we did have a red week for the first time over the last couple of weeks when it comes to the uh, SP 500. So, you know, is that going to stick around? Probably not, because if you see this price action here, uh, a lot of the bulls came back in uh, late in the week to bring uh, price back up. And you can see here that on Friday, we had a very bullish day on uh, the SP 500. So the interesting thing to note here on the daily on the SP 500 is that we did close above this candle right there. Okay, so if we look at it right here, okay, we can clearly see here on the daily uh, that we did close above this structure point there. So uh, going to the eight hour, <clears throat> you're going to see that uh, we came to this level here. Okay, so from the eight hour, we are now at this area of previous support and resistance. So it's going to be interesting to see what the SP 500 does for the beginning of the week. If we add a fib level here from this to here, you can clearly see here that we kind of went right into that 61.8 area and uh, we rejected that area. But again, it's a brand new um, market week beginning here. Now, usually what happens in these cases is we get that impulse, we get a retracement, and then we get a continuation okay so we are going to see if that happens on a bigger time frame uh, again the high let me delete that the high of this area right in here is our our all-time high on the sp500 okay that's at 5276 go back over to the left and we see nothing but black space so you know all these markets are really due for a, a major correction, whether we're going to get it or not. Uh, there's massive liquidity down in these levels here, but we are going to trade, again, what we see and not what we think. So I'm going to give you a couple of different levels uh, to keep in mind as you go into this particular week right in here. That's going to be that level right here, and that's going to be this level right in here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and mark these up as well with some yellow so you have them so these are going to be the levels that we uh, will be trading inside of our group and again we have a lot of futures traders as well who trade es <clears throat> and so we'll be giving you these uh trades and these charts for you to have for the beginning of the week as well as we walk down the four hour again we can now see that price action begins to shift and this is why it's so important to look at price action at the different time frames because it begins to give you clues as what to price may or may not do. Okay. So again, uh, if you look here at this four hour, okay, let me get rid of these fib levels real quick. Okay. Uh, if we look at this um, four hour candle, right, we came down and grabbed almost, you know, a little bit more than 50% liquidity of this major bullish candle that took off. So again, Price action could be if we close above 5218, we're probably going to see this scenario. We close, we retest, and then we go higher. Okay. If we reject this area, then we should see price coming back down somewhat. But again, uh, just based on the way the market has been moving, uh, same thing here. You've got to really get your head around continuing to buy the dips. There is no, there is no structure right now that's telling us we're going anywhere further lower right we would really need to close below this structure point okay and then come back down if we're going to get back into the uh you know lower five thousands okay until that doesn't happen we got to continue to be bullish on the sp 500 and continue to look at these areas buying the dips from these levels of support because that's what the evidence is showing us here so these are going to be the key levels to begin the week on the sp 500 uh, here is the one hour uh, price action so again looking at what price does at this 5218 area is going to be important whether we are going to reject this one more time and maybe pull back or close above retest and then continue higher that is going to be so important uh, to look at in this area and again uh, we will be updating you as we go out throughout the course of the week so now on the final chart analysis, uh, let's get into uh, the NASDAQ 
for some quick analysis on every different time frame for you. Okay, hey, and a real quick message. If you are getting some value on this video, don't forget to go down below, hit that like button. If you're brand new, subscribe, and also turn on your notifications so you can get all these videos right to your smartphone or your computer and you can be notified. And hey, how about impacting a life? Share this video with someone else, introduce them to trading, or maybe share it in your trading community. We'll love to see more folks uh, come on in, join our community, and be a part of some of the amazing things uh, that we are doing as well. So let's go ahead and get into the NASDAQ. Uh, I kind of left this open here. So this was our uh, trade alert that we put out to our members uh, late uh, last week, I believe this was on Friday. So congratulations to all the members who took this buy from the NASDAQ and so went right into our first profit level, which was the blue line, and then made it up to our second level, which was the yellow section here. So let's go ahead and delete that now. Let's get over into the weekly. Again, same thing, kind of on the NASDAQ. Uh, so the NAS has had two weeks now of red, right? <coughs> Sorry about that. And so uh, we shall see if we are going to rebound from there. Uh, this level here, we've seen price come up to the bottom side. And then this has been our top side here. So as we look at the daily, again, that was a positive green day on the daily. And so we're going to be working within this area here as we move forward. And the NASDAQ has been very, very uh, profitable to us in our group. So you can see here that we are kind of trending in this area right in here, okay? So again, as we begin to see uh, price action, same thing as kind of the S&P, right? We had uh, this FIB level hit just about the 61.8. We saw that rejection, and this is where we closed. Again, same thing with the indices. We'll be on live uh, Sunday at 6 p.m. to do our gap analysis with our members. And again, this will be an area that we will be looking at as the market opens. But if you kind of look back from a 30,000 foot view, let me get rid of these FIB levels. Again, we're in this area here where price has kind of been stuck in this range right in here, okay? So there will be a breakout of this range at some point. But until then, we will continue to look at these levels here from a smaller time frame. okay? So I'm gonna mark up these levels here and I'm going to give you a couple of other bottom levels so you can have and you can mark them up right in here. So these will be the key levels to begin the week that we will be looking at. Uh, breaks and retests, uh, we sell or we buy, depending on where we are. Now, the price action on this four hour, again, came back down, grabbed this liquidity uh, from this candle. So we shall see what happens here with the gap. Any movement back down, I'm still going to be bullish on all the indices until proven otherwise, we would really need price to close below this level here, 17826, if we are going to entertain any further downward movement. In the meantime, we are still bullish on the indices and we will continue to play those bullish moves. Uh, the sells are always a little bit more dangerous in this type of market, but not when we have structure like this. We can take low risk, high reward uh, entries as we have been doing all week inside of our trading community. So if you need to pause this video again, mark up these zones. These will be the key areas to look at, but again, bullish on the NASDAQ as well. Okay, I hope you got some value on this video. We went through crude oil, we went through the SP 500, and we went through the NASDAQ. Hey, if you made it this far in the video, I wanna shout you out. So go down uh, below into the comments area, and type in the end, the end. So I know that you rated all the way until the end of the video. I want to shout you out as well. Okay, thank you so much for watching. You're going to see a video coming up on your screen here. Take a look at that video. I've been getting some amazing feedback on people scalping crude oil with this crossover uh, strategy using some smaller time frame moving averages. And as you can see, I'm still not 100% recovered from my cold and my voice is starting to go. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'll see you in the app in our community. Uh, and if you're not there yet, I hope to see you join us soon. Have a great trading week. Be blessed, be happy, and be kind to someone today.